making a Stuart model steam plant part 7. A quick look at a small PM Research horizontal engine, then examining the third of the Stuart S50 steam engines. This one was worse than the other two and didn't run well at all. First of all though, let's look at this PM Research engine. Before test running any kind of model steam engine, it is really important to lubricate the parts first. If you don't do that and run the engine, if there's any metal to metal contact without lubrication, the parts will be damaged very quickly. What do I personally think about PM Research products? Well, they seem to be very well made. This one looks like a self-assembly kit. I just wish they would use small hexagon bolts instead of these really ugly slot-headed screws. It's all a question of scale. This is a very small model engine. If we magnified this up to full size, you would need a six foot long screwdriver with a six inch blade. Hexagon bolts would be a much better option in my opinion. As you can clearly see, the engine runs very well and it's timed to perfection at both ends of the stroke. This is not a slide valve engine, it's a piston valve engine. And while I'm trying to find an Allen key that actually fits to tighten up the flywheel, I will explain the differences between slide valves and piston valves. Slide valves are held onto the port face by the pressure of the steam in the steam chest. This means that the valve is more difficult to move across the ports. But it takes no effort to move a piston valve because there's no steam pressure on the valve itself. Finally, I found an Allen key that fitted. Here it is. This flywheel has been loose for a long time because there are some marks on the crankshaft. Here I'm moving the flywheel slightly outwards so that it clears the base and now I've re-tightened the grub screw. Because this is the only Allen key I have in my collection that fits this type of grub screw, I marked it with some paint. While it was running I thought it would be a good time to use some Scotch-Brite to clean up the end of the crankshaft. There is some end float on the crankshaft and I think it could probably do with a washer. But having said that it runs very well. It's a very nice little engine, it runs well and it's powerful. Time to look at the third of the Stuart S50 engines that were sent to me. I'm going to be building a really good quality steam plant using Stuart parts. And the customer over in the USA has decided to give up model engineering, so he sent me all of the engine bits and pieces that he had. As I mentioned in the last episode, once I built this steam plant, to my satisfaction and hopefully the customer's, I will be selling quite a lot of the excess parts. When the parts finally are for sale, I will be advertising them via a video on Patreon. But that will not be for a while. While I've been telling you all that, I've lubricated the engine thoroughly. And now with the help of a double adapter that's not quite the right thread, I'm connecting an airline. I'm curious to see whether this engine runs at all with its loose cylinder and crosshead guides. This is not a good start, even with the engine stationary, air is blowing out of the exhaust. Currently I'm feeding the engine with 30 pounds per square inch of compressed air. This is not a good sign, it's not even trying. So far this engine appears to be the worst of the three, and the colour scheme makes it look like a wasp. Here I've turned the engine over to tighten the bolts underneath. And yes, I know the screwdriver's a bit small, but I'm not putting a lot of pressure on, so it shouldn't be a problem. By nipping up the three machine screws, the cylinder is now more rigidly mounted. I've turned up the air pressure to 50 pounds per square inch, and now I think it's going to go. Here I'm checking the valve timing, which is pretty good at both ends. But there's still a problem of the engine not running. And initially, the cause of this problem is not obvious. I turned up the air pressure a little bit more. Time to try again. This is at about 60 pounds per square inch and the engine is running, but not very well. The good news is though, the flywheel is perfectly true. Maybe not on the inside edge, but definitely on the outside edge. The further increase of the air pressure made the engine go a little bit faster.
but there's no power at all. I think it's time to have a look inside the steam chest. Firstly, I disconnect the airline, and then I take off the steam chest cover, so I can have a look at the valve. And here it is. The port face isn't scored, and the slide valve is timed perfectly. At this stage, while I was having a quick think about the job, I thought it would be a good idea to tighten up the crosshead slide bars. The slide bar gap spacers are too short, so when I tightened the bolts holding the guide bars in place, the guide bars acted as a clamp, and it was impossible to turn the engine over. At least the slide valve looks okay, so I'll re-tighten the steam chest cover and give it another run. There are some drain cocks fitted at the other side, and they're really big and ugly, and were really designed for a model steam locomotive. I don't know what the threads are on these drain cocks, but they do not match the holes that are in the cylinder. I've made sure that both of the drain cocks are fully shut, but the engine is still feeble. And when I stop the engine, the compressed air has just been blown straight to exhaust. On the steam plant that I'm going to be building, the S50 will be driving a generator. And at the moment, there is nowhere near enough power available at the flywheel. I'll stop talking for a while and let you listen to its feebleness. That's enough of that, I've removed one of the drain cocks and now I'm going to remove the other one. In this clip I'm having a look in my small box of drain cocks to see if I have any. And here I'm checking what the thread is. It turns out to be 530 seconds by 40 threads per inch. The only problem is, I only have one drain cock that is that configuration. As a temporary measure, I fitted the correct size of locomotive drain cock to the engine. I'll try the engine on compressed air again and check that both of the drain cocks are fully closed, and they are. I've got a pretty good idea what's wrong with this engine, and I'll look into it in more detail in the next episode. But for the moment, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.